Okay, I have <clears throat> no idea how any of this works, and uh, I'm just going to do a thing. I'm not sure how to go about uh, commenting on people who comment on stuff. Oh, there's a little bar there. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways, I'm just going to be hanging out editing this photo. Thomas asked me to try and remove the lady from the horse picture. I don't need to do any color correction or anything on this picture. I just need to remove the lady. So probably just going to try and like get rid of most of her body and stuff and then try and figure out how I'm going to edit underneath this hand because that's going to be the hardest part of the whole thing. Pretty high quality picture. It's a Nikon raw image, so it's pretty good. Since I'm not doing any colors or anything on it, I'm just going to uh, get right into it and go open image. I have a couple helper pictures. I don't know if they're actually going to help, but it looks like maybe between this picture and this picture, I'll have a face. And if I don't have the bottom of the face of the horse, then uh, someone can comment why the long face when I'm sad about it. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just going to start by duplicating the background because you always want to just save the background for stuff. I made a layer here for, um, for stamping and, and healing so I can non-destructively remove stuff. So basically what I want to do here is clone. Uh, just try and do some easy stuff first. Maybe it'll work out. Remember, there's no mistakes. There's just happy little accidents, right? So the reason I'm using a layer instead of um, just doing it on the actual copy of the thing is because if I need to, I can turn it on and off and it's non-destructive. So that's why I am using a layer with the clone stamp tool. Um, looks like I'm starting to get more light stuff than dark stuff over here, so I'm going to just do sampling better. Uh, sample a lot. That's how you be good at photo editing. Is sample a lot and just really get that Bob Ross vibe going on in your head. That should do it. Um, we might need to like come back after and just cause some more blur because it looks pretty unnatural right now, but what are you going to do? I don't even think I'm getting paid for this, so... Thomas, screw you, man. This is uh, this is a good favor for me. I don't know how to incorporate some of like the ASMR stuff that Bob Ross used to do in his videos, where he like slapped the brush. Because all I have is a mechanical keyboard, and it would be just awful to hear me typing. This is going to be an interesting part. The transition between the grass and these trees I have to kind of follow that line up and it sort of ends before you can even really see it so maybe we'll just like try a little bit at a time and see how it goes I think this is just going to be for, for Facebook or something for for this uh, horse group so I don't think I need to go too crazy with so if there's a, there's a kind of like a green aspect here. It looks like um, this is part of the woods that was uh, burned or something. And these trees are kind of dead, so it looks like I can steal some of this green stuff, this regrowth stuff, every here and there, and just patch it in to make it look nice. So this tree comes all the way down here. Um, so you can just kind of line it up like that as you come down. I think I might need to add in some other stuff in behind there later with like or later with a different kind of blend mode. Hi Avis, hi John. Welcome to the live stream. I have not done this before, but I figure if I'm going to be here editing anyway, I might as well, you know, let people watch me fail and and try new things and see which YouTube tutorials I use to steal my talent from. I know for sure when I get down to this part at the bottom uh, where the horse, I have to like invent the horse's face. 
I know I'm going to need to go and ask my buddy Unmesh on YouTube how to do some um, uh, selecting with channels. So we're going to be doing some of that, I guess. That's probably going to be the most challenging part of this whole thing is just doing some channel selection. Uh, you can see that this whole part here looks pretty artificial right now. I don't know how to fix that, but we'll try something. <laughs> Avis, never a fail or something. Yeah, that's right. There's no mistakes here, just happy little accidents or something. We're going to see pretty hard, hard lines here. I don't know how I'm going to fix those, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Once you start to understand the fundamentals of how light works, it, it becomes easy to start faking your way through stuff. I think if I lower the hardness on my brush through some of these locations, I can start blending it a little bit better. And then using the healing tool later, maybe I can get, uh, I can get some better transitions. I want to increase the hardness. I like to use kind of a hard clone stamp tool so that when you're doing like the structure of something, it doesn't lose itself and make itself all wispy. I actually like that. There's a, there's a gap in the forest there. So this is going to get really awkward. We need to go and figure out what those trees look like for real. I wonder if there's a... Maybe we can steal some of this stuff later and put it in there on a different scale. No, it doesn't actually look that awkward now that I come back to it. There's just... Uh, it's just going to be weird transitioning. See, you know what? When you zoom out, all you have to do is zoom out and it looks fine. So. That's what we're going to do with that. I'm going to say, oh, I should save this. Of course. Yeah, let's make an editing folder. And we'll call this, uh, you know, what lady? We don't need to know what that lady is. OK. So after we save that, uh, it's going to let me continue doing stuff, maybe. I don't know why it's not letting me save it. Hmm. It's really weird. Save as. Revert. I don't want to revert. OK. This is all clearly unplanned. OK, I'm just not going to have, I'm not going to have a cool name. I'm going to have a normal name. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a new layer and try and do some healing on a different layer. So I'm just going to name this stamping. So that was just a stamp tool. Uh, then let's do some healing brush because it'll help. Uh, there's some harsh edges in here. Maybe we can uh, just kind of like blend them, blend them in with the healing tool to make things less awful. Just kind of get you know some of the textures from elsewhere in the photo. I try to trick people into thinking that you know it's all naturally into the camera. Uh, I accidentally got the lady there. So just a little bit of, little bit of, yeah, let's keep stealing texture from elsewhere in the photo and just start blending in. Got to be careful when you use that tool because let's make it really small. When you travel, if you travel too far, you'll see you start picking up the horse again. And you don't want to, you want to do that. You just want the grass. So it looks like we just have some dark areas here that we need to sort of finagle into this area just to get kind of like a background and with this picture I might want to just crop it later so that all of this jank is not in the picture but uh, for now let's try our best because this is the only part that I feel confident about doing the next part is going to be really hard so I'm going to use up as much time as I can doing something I'm okay at doing I just have a ghost arm here uh, let's see, I think I want to get as much of this out as I can with some more stamp tool and then we're going to start getting into the territory where we have to invent texture and that's going to be really tricky because if you don't have if you don't have the information into the camera it's really difficult to invent the, the textures so what we'll do is we'll just like really carefully do like a half and half thing where uh, the horse hair is closing in around that thumb so that we don't have to borrow so much from over here. It looks like in this lighting it's all pretty even and straight down so when people are comparing 
and analyzing the picture later in depth, uh, they'll be able to see that it's like legit. So we'll just kind of keep this like light brown. Is this a different horse? No, no, it's the same horse. It's weird that it's so much lighter brown in this picture. I guess it's just the lighting. So we'll keep doing that, and then you know we'll keep just coming over over the hand here. Hey Stu, thumbs up, buddy. Uh, going over the thumb here, and just try to get as much natural nearby stuff as we can. Just try to keep this line of light brown and darker brown going. Uh, okay, so that isn't looking too bad. We're definitely going to have to smudge things around a little bit later, but for now, that's not super bad. You got to keep in mind that this is probably just going to be viewed on Facebook somewhere, and the resolution on those pictures is pretty bad, so you know, hopefully it won't be too noticeable. So here I'm just kind of smudging the edges here with the healing brush. That's probably not the correct choice. I actually kind of like it better without. So what we're just going to do is um, we're just going to look at only the healing. Yeah. You can always go back because it's not destructive and just erase that. And then you're there. So, so far we've got a little bit of horse stuff here. And this is a before and after for now. It looks like I can get a little bit more of this arm out here and we want to get rid of this buckle completely because <clears throat> I don't want to recreate this whole this whole thing but this picture is better because it's closer so we're going to just try and oh there's a buckle here too I wonder if I can just like cut this buckle off like here and have it still look pretty natural it would be weird for I guess people who like know horses would know that it isn't correct, but it's photo editing, you gotta do what you gotta do. So just kind of sampling around the area. You know, maybe we can grab the ropes later and put them in. It depends on how this whole inventing a horse face thing goes. I actually don't know if I can do this project, so perhaps we will see if uh, it's doable. So right now, we're getting to the point where I need to start making the brush way harder because we're getting closer and closer to the, the horse's mouth. Um, so that's where we're at here. Let's grab Let's grab this horse face and just see what we can do with the the horse horse face cuz I think I might be able to do something with this. Is this the right selection tool? Oh, like the lasso selection tool. Yeah. So <clears throat> I probably want this much face at, at least. So I just control J that and now I have just that part. Um, I think I have to go to channels and so the green channel and what's the horse? The horse is probably red channel. It's kind of hard to tell. We turn them all back on. So what the channels does? How do I turn? How do I, on mesh? Help me. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to. I'm gonna listen to this guy. So I know but in colors like red, green and blue, you need to make a change in the preferences by going to edit and then preferences and inside of preferences let's go to interface. Edit preferences like this. Edit preferences interface. And inside of interface make sure that this ah. is unchecked. Okay? okay, it is unchecked. I guess I was just screwing up. So I know that the green channel is going to be this grass for sure. And we're probably going to have a lot of red channel for this horse. 
I would assume. Maybe blue. Anyways, I know that the grass is green, so the green channel is going to be what I try to go for for masking. So let's just see how to do it over Select here. Show channels in color, and you can hit OK, and it will show the channels in color. If that's the problem, this part is probably totally illegal showing his video on here, so you could probably copyright claim me for this, but. Make sure this is on set, hit OK. Picks in perfect. It's now amazing. Your job is to find out which channel has the most contrast. Red, as you can see. We figured that out. Very neat that the hair completely black leaves me black. Okay, so for me, red is the perfect channel. We're going to use green. Now, make a copy of the red channel or the channel which you choose, whatever channel you choose. In a second example, it will be different. Let's drag it and drop it over here. It makes a copy of the red channel. Now, our job is to get the background completely black and the hair completely white. Which means We're going to try and do the opposite, I think. And the background will not be selected. Or do the opposite. Yeah. Get the hair completely black or the background completely white depends upon example to example, image to image. I don't know if you can hear the background completely black and the hair stuff completely from him, white. but... Okay. How do we do that? Hold the control and press... Levels. Level. This is for levels. Or you can also go to image, adjustments, and levels. Whatever... Uh, you like you can use the shortcut as well now let's zoom in quite a bit and our job is to get the background completely black let's take this from the left to the right this is fine if if we take it too much have a look if we take it too much it will fry up the hair we don't want that to happen right so we have to find that balance i think i missed something here okay. and there you have it right now you can you can make a selection of the hair how do we do that? We're going to do that using channels. So first of all, let's come to this layer, subject layer. Let's name it subject for convenience purposes. Now let's turn off the mask by holding the shift key and click on the mask. This will turn off the mask. Now, let's go to the channels. Now in the channels, apart from RGB, you will find red, green, and, and inside of the... We did that. The completely black and the hair. And let's still zoom in quite a bit. And our job is... Hmm. Why didn't levels work for me here? Let's, let's figure that out. So we got grass selected. We're going to do levels on channel grass. I shouldn't take it far enough. Okay, yeah, I need to make this grass completely white and the horse completely black or blackish. I, I want What I want, I guess the goal of this part is I want to get all these hairs and all this detail from this horse face. So I can select it with all the hairs selected, copy it, paste it into the other picture, and rotate it so that we get some detail and then mask out, uh, which probably entails doing some, uh, some like dual image work. Okay, so here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do this. This is perfect. We want to do this thing. I don't care about all this gray stuff, I don't think. So all I want to do is try and get that yeah, that's kind of what I want, like that, masked out. It doesn't have to be perfect either, because I can kind of finesse it. Like, I can mix these two pictures. I have the benef I have the benefit of having two pictures. So, take this. okay. So after he makes it all black and white, we have to just take quite black other areas okay. in the background, and we have a contrast. So here's what you have to do: hold the Control or Command, click on this. So right now, the I'm just gonna save. Uh, click OK here. This is definitely already saved as something, but we'll, we'll save it again, I guess. Oh, I might be sa <laughs> I'm saving the new horse face picture. Okay, so this is the now saved version of the horse face picture. Hold Control, click on this. Oh, I have a mask. Sweet. Hair is completely selected. Let's come back to the layers and select the mask. Now, I wonder if I selected... What which which part did I select? I selected the opposite. So what I need to do is, I need to delete that, go back to channels, click on this again, uh, control click on it. I need to invert this mask because I think that's just control I. But oh, that's invert everything. Uh, how do I select invert inverse? Oh, shift control I. It's different on uh, Photoshop. So. I control J that and that what that does is that should give me like just a horse face, but 
Apparently not. Why didn't that work the way I wanted it to? Like I should just be selecting. I want to delete this whole thing. Let's delete this whole thing. Should be selecting just this horse face. If I copy it, paste it. Okay. Uh, so that did a couple of things that uh, that deleted a lot of the detail in the reins and stuff. But I think what I can do is just make a mask. Just make a mask. Uh, this is this is fun. I like this. This is weird problem solving. Okay, so. I'm gonna make a mask and we're gonna make it white and we're going to brush some stuff into the mask and then hopefully black uh, this uh oh I totally messed everything up now how do I get that back Oh, I'm selecting. I don't want to select this mask. Get out of here. Yes, okay. So I want to, yes. So now when I make this black, when I brush black into here, it should give me that thing all the time. Am I trying to do the opposite of this? What am I trying to do? What I want to do is make the image show through, but only in that one spot. If I do, if I go to this thing again, actually, what that's probably what I could do. So what I'll do is I'll click on horse face, this horse face. I'll click on grass, and I will make my selection. And now when I go to horse face here and I delete it, it should delete all of the stuff in horse face that I don't want. Maybe not. So I don't even want to edit the mask anymore. How do I get out of the mask edit? There we go. Okay. Well, you know what? It probably doesn't even matter because I have the part of the horse face that I want. I just have to get it back. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this over here and we're going to put it back over here. And of course, it's way smaller because the picture is way further away. But what we can do is we're going to call this horse head and we'll free transform that, which I think is control I, but I'm just going to try and figure that out. Free transform, control T. Ah. T for transform, that makes sense. So I want this horse head and I want it to be kind of correct to the way it was before. And let's just try to make it as big as the other one and just see what we can do with it. Because we only need part of the horse head anyway. So let's go to make uh, the thing like this big and we'll try to match up the eyeball. And it looks like it's rotated slightly. And I think what I want to do before I get too crazy with the transforming is go to just this horse head, make it really big, and then use the eraser on the parts that I definitely don't want just to get rid of some of this noise. So we can use a pretty hard eraser and just get rid of all this stuff. And at minimum, what this is going to do is this is going to give me some textures to use. So, we got that now. Now we're gonna try and match these horse faces up. And I really just want this like goatee thing, so, or horse tee, I don't know, whatever. I'm gonna free transform that bad boy by pressing Control T, and we're gonna try to match up his horse face. <clears throat> so, if you look closely here, you can see uh, the horse's eye is 
there, but it's uh, it's not quite rotated correctly. So let's try and give it a little bit of a rotate just to see. And that's not looking too bad. So we kind of matched like the whole size of and everything of this of this face. So this nostril is what about that big or something? It's kind of a different angle, so it's not exactly fair, but literally all I'm looking for is kind of like this this stuff there. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. And that's that's what that horse face looks like. <laughs> I'm gonna say horse face too many times. Uh, thumbs up for horse faces. Dan's messing me something. Oh, it's a video. I'll watch that in a minute. So what we need to do with this is put it underneath. No, we'll put it over. Put it over the other stuff, which it already is. So we're gonna we're gonna commit to that transform for now. We're gonna mask out by using a black brush the parts that are not the parts that we're trying to use right now. Which would be pretty much everything except for this. Um, oh, that's all. This is trippy. So the really crappy part is that there's some weird. Oh, we, we want that to be gone. There's some weird like, yeah, this stuff. So there was actually there was actually a thing there that we did want to retain. And if think if you want to look at just the mask, you can alt click on it. Yeah, I'll click on it. And then you can see areas where you forgot to erase. So that's like that. I feel like I messed something up here. Oh, I made a clipping mask. Release clipping mask. Okay. Now, all these areas I can just remember. I don't want those. So I'm just going to do that. And then I've got sort of like a horse face, uh, like scruff thing going on. But the real issue is, is that this part here is really messing with my vibe now and I need look at all that stuff what's this from there's some oh that's the hair that we were doing before right okay so what happened here is that by brushing really lightly with a soft brush I've kind of gone too far with the unmasking so I'm going to switch to a white brush here and I'm going to try and get back a lot of this detail that I lost and that's why it was looking so strange is because I went too far with that. And I know that I don't want this shape here and I don't want this shape here so let's just turn this back on and see. That's not too bad. So I think the next thing I want to do is really carefully try and remove this so that I get this buckle. So I want this buckle back. I want that buckle back, and we need to use a pretty hard brush this time, so I don't use that same mistake twice. I want this buckle, and I don't think that her hand touches it. Yeah, so that's fine. But we're going to keep this this strap right where it is. Although I think we might get rid of this kind of weird zone. I think I could have avoided doing all of this stuff if I had done this part properly so now that I'm thinking about it maybe I'll just try and do this part again let's try this again so I think I know what to do so we'll just go to the grass uh, we'll select that grass but then what we'll do is we'll also use the magic selection tool quick selection tool uh, I need to invert the mask first right flare what was it control shift I uh, and what I'm going to do is add, using this brush, add in. Okay, yeah, so I'll just add in these details back. <sighs> we should have done this in the first place. Why didn't anybody tell me? I remember there was these buckles needed to come back. These things needed to come back. And you guys are supposed to be helping me, and you know, no one said anything about adding more mask to the mask. Duh. Just it's just uh, it's just silly. So I'm going to do the selection, and then 
Later, when we blend it, I'm going to use uh, whatever the thingy on the side is called, and that'll that should blend it pretty good. This doesn't have to be perfect. I think it's just going to be a JPEG in someone's uh, someone's Facebook profile, so it's not like a huge deal. Remember how all this stuff was here? Let's get rid of that right now. All this, all that stuff. Okay. So now we've got a nice amount of horse face going on. We can still unselect all this stuff, I think. Some solid, solid horse face action going on here. So for those people that just joined, after I do a little bit of selection here, what we're going to do is uh, show you how to remove a woman from a picture and leave the horse in the picture. But right now, I am doing this really, really haphazardly bad masking job so that I can just get some of these reins. Because I actually, I was thinking maybe I do want these reins because maybe I do want to put this in later, but I probably don't. But it doesn't hurt to have it. So I'm going to save this. I think if I press Control J, it should just give me what the parts that I want. Yeah, so now I do that. I can copy that layer in. We'll erase this jank that we did a second ago. Put this horse face in, free transform it with control T and make it bigger and then do opacity like mm, 80 somewhere and that way you can line up the horse eyeball and actually we might even use this little stirrup thing and you can see that it's sort of at a different angle so it's not like a super good comparison so I wonder if we can skew that I'm just trying to figure out with these buckles uh, Free transform. Hello. Okay. These buckles, what size it's supposed to be. And I think it should be just a little bit smaller. Because the buckles should be about the same size, because they're the same buckle. Logic checks out. So horse eyeballs, pretty much the same, but of course it's still in the wrong direction. So I'm going to go into rotate here and I'm just gonna rotate this horse face into place here. And it looks like because I think I think in this picture, the horse is like looking at the camera, and in the picture we're stealing from, it's looking uh, directly sideways from the camera. I think that's messing with the scale a bit uh, on the front of the horse's face. So we have to make it a little bigger to match it. And you can see that in the buckle there. So I think even though this isn't you know what, we should probably just match the mouth because that's what we're really, our hand is closest to the, the mouth. So we should probably just match the mouth. And if the mouth is good, then everything else will be good. And I just kind of like will dodge around this and hopefully it won't look too bad. So we got pretty much that exactly where we want it. We can make the opacity 100 again and we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna commit to the transform by pressing enter. Then we're going to add a layer mask again. And we're going to paint in black on the mask to remove, with a pretty hard brush, to remove the horse face from like the other picture. And we're gonna to wanna to remove it anywhere where we want actual details, like the nose and on the reins and stuff. But we're gonna try and retain it everywhere else where it's just fur, because that's really what all we need to get is the fur part. So, ooh, this is gonna be awkward. I wonder how much, I can't really keep this part, but I can probably keep this part. No, horse people are gonna know it's wrong. So we're gonna remove all this stuff and we're just gonna try and keep this little scruffy part. We actually don't want any of that. And we're gonna start getting to the point where we're at her arm again, which isn't super helpful. But what we'll do is we'll make sure that we get his mouth there and then we can start being creative with how we do our other um, healing and, and chopping here in a minute so let's just find the extents of where her hand is because those, those are the only spots that we really want to be covering up anyway so we can see her hand there her hand there again Everywhere that her hand is not, or her hand is, that's where we want the mask. We did some work there already, so let's flip it to white again. Uh, I can see 
where her hand is. So we're just going to go in to where her hand is there. And we're just going to touch it up. And I know that from the other picture, it's darker. So I'll probably want to brighten up this whole layer at some point. We're going to try brightness contrast. We're going to do a clipping mask so that it clips to the selection of the other mask. And we're going to just try and brighten it up a little bit so it matches a little better. It's not going to be perfect. And I might actually want to do levels instead of brightness because brightness is giving me weird, weird vibes. Let's use curves. Got a weird like uh, Abraham Lincoln thing going on right now. Use a clipping mask and just bring it up a little bit. And then go back to this mask here. And all the areas that are a little bit weird, use a really soft brush with the black mask. And we're just going to cover those up. Let's just make that transition a little smoother. Definitely here. going on there oh, okay so that's his actual hair that worked out really well okay so there's some weirdness happening behind here and I think I can solve that by doing Ooh, her hand is still there We're going to need to get that hand all the way out of the way. So let's get rid of this stuff for now. Get rid of that stuff for now. And let's just let's just get that hand out of there. So we're going to try and get rid of this, um, this part here by doing some more stamping in the stamp tool. And we're actually just going to totally get rid of uh, her hand altogether. And I think we're just going to be a little bit belligerent with it. I don't really know what I'm going to, like, this is kind of a challenging one and I don't normally do stuff like this, so we're just going to do our best. And if it sucks, it sucks. There's going to be no reins on this horse, it's going to look like it's broken. And I don't really know how to fix that other than trying to maybe copy it in from the other picture later, but. It's just going to look like the horse is out there chilling and chewing and stuff. So, you just got to kind of use your judgment. Uh, I'm going to take off my shoes because I came home and got right to it. I was so excited to do some editing. I didn't realize how much I just tilted my head to the side the entire time. Maybe that's why my photos are all sideways. And we're going to grab some more of this horse. That's too much of that. And just try to get rid of this lady's arm as much as possible. And just use a lot of different sample areas. And just try to get, you know, as best a match as you can. And look for like leading lines and stuff and just follow the lines around through the edit. So like here, there's this leather strap. Um, which might get covered over by the other one anyway, but there's a line that we can follow and what following that line will do is make it a lot more natural when it comes to Editing and I thought what's the Bracket no that makes it bigger. What is other is it a different bracket that makes it rotate? What's the rotate stamp button? rotate stamp and Photoshop. Rotate the clone tool. That page isn't working, okay. Nudge, scale, and rotate. Keyboard shortcuts. Uh, hold Alt, Shift, rotate the clone source, okay. So we're gonna go back to clone. I haven't tried this yet and I want to. So we're going to make a selection with the clone tool in here. It's going to be that area and it's like control shift arrow or shift arrow maybe. Control arrow. 
that's not doing anything. I don't want to do that at all. I want to use the clone stamp, dude. Let's just do it from over here. Maybe it'll be easier. Shift. That's just making it bigger and smaller. Someone on the internet lied to me. How dare they? Nudge the, oh, rotate, alt, shift, and then the, the arrows. That's weird. I don't know, maybe they changed that with an update or something. Anyways, I could probably just grab a smaller selection and just add it in that way. And then take a bigger selection here and add in those finer, those like bigger details like that and the whole goal of this is to just try and get rid of as much of this lady's hand as possible so when I go to add in the other part of the horse's face there then I'll be able to use I really I just want to eliminate from here down on her hand so maybe we should start from the other direction just to see if it actually works because when I come and use the blend, uh, I can, I won't have her hand showing up. Maybe I need to do it the opposite way. No, I won't have her hand showing up underneath. That's what really what I want to get rid of is just her hand and keep the horse. So, stamping. Let's do more stamping. Uh, that's getting a little bit hard, so let's just do a lighter stamp tool and go nuts with the... Uh, I think we can be a little bit belligerent here because we really don't care about how it looks under here. We just want it to be green. I think. But here, I think we can use the brush and get more hair instead of the green. And it looks like... If I just use kind of this wispy part of the hair, that'll work fine. And just continue blending in between. A little hair, a little hair and a little grass. That's what we want. Just a little bit of both. And the hair go or the remember the hair is in the foreground. So every time you remove the area, you'll need to come back with the hair and make sure that the hair covers over the green part that you put in because it's in the foreground. We're zoomed in pretty close here now, so this is I'm not really sure how well this is gonna look after. But we'll see. So so far it looks pretty gnarly, but let's just keep going and see how good we can get it. If it's a total failure, that's fine. Because this is just practice. Just practice for something cooler. I'm getting all self-conscious about my head being sideways, but it's literally the only way I can see clearly. The really tough part about sampling small is that you don't get a good spread of pixels and it makes it really obvious that you've sampled. So we're just going to go along and just use uh, the sample of the horse to extend the sample here. Now we put this back on and there's some obvious jank that we need to get rid of. So let's do a black mask and that wasn't the black mask at all. We need brush. Black mask and get rid of that stuff. But we want we want that part of the face, I think. We want this because there's a curve there and there's like almost a natural buckle here. I don't think that's real. Yeah. So this belt is on the one that we sampled and it's not real, but it's real enough for our purposes here that I think it'll be fine. And I think I want to just blend this in to be round and we'll probably do that with liquify. And then we need to figure out how to get rid of all this white in the background because it's bugging me. Turn this off. So there's there's some real, well not real, realer <laughs> hair 
in the back here. So let's just blend that out first. And all this other hair isn't legit, so we can just get rid of this. Because we're really only concerned about the area that we don't have anything. And I think it starts to look more natural. We're trying to figure out which layer looks more natural. And here is where it really starts looking blurry and fake. So I think if we use the stuff there, and it's a different kind of color composition, but the reason that we're doing all of the work here in uh, Photoshop pre-color is because I want to be able to that almost looks good. I want to be able to send this back to Thomas and have him do all of his color correction stuff after and that'll help cover up a lot of the flaws that we're getting here. So we want to, uh, how do we, can we do it just on here? Is that, this, this layer, all of the light stuff. Yeah, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm using blend if gray and you do that by double clicking on the layer you want to do it on. So this is, this is horse face two. A save. Uh, you click, you'll click on this little blank spot here, and it gives you this blend if thing. And then you want to say this layer because it's the face that you want to use, and you just blend off, blend off the colors that are not the ones that you want. So I think we can just start by pulling it back. So it just starts pulling back, so you get a lot of the big stuff. Hold Alt and then you start getting more blend like that and that's starting to look pretty good so let's go with that for now and obviously there's some weird circle stuff going on in there and I think what we can do with that is let's create a new layer and try and do some clone stamping from up here and just try to even out these hairs uh, shit. so that it like looks like one continuous kind of thing maybe maybe let's do it right in stamping here because what I want to do is essentially recreate that kind of feel that kind of feels what I want so I would start probably here and just have a little bit. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't look right. So it looks almost right though. That's the that's the that's the thing. So yeah, let's sample a little bit lower. And what that will do is make it a little bit higher. Let's sample real soft. Let's add some more horse hairs here. Just like all these little horse hairs. I don't know. Maybe it'll look cool. It looks really shit from up close, but when you zoom out. It looks moderately less shit. So let's let's keep adding. That's this is adding it behind it. So what that'll do is it should add it. Yeah, it'll add it behind everything. So we get all these like wispy little hairs, and those are the things that really sell the effect as authentic. So we need to get all these little wispy hairs in the back behind our mask stuff to hide all these really jagged edges that we got. And I don't know how to increase the feathering on that, but this is starting to do the trick. I think if we do a couple of, let's do like little horse hairs in front of everything too. Uh, oh, that doesn't quite work. Let's make little horse hairs a darken. Let's do darken. Does darken work? Yeah, so if we just do a darken mask, and what darken masking does is it, it says we have a selection and when we paste it on we're only going to darken areas we're not going to lighten areas I think that's what it does that's what it should do so a scruffy boy but that doesn't look too horrible. So what do we have to do from here? Is anybody actually still watching? If someone's actually still watching, maybe you throw me a tip. What, what else do you want to see on here? Because we have, we have this buckle, which 
doesn't necessarily exist in real life. Oh yeah, I wanted to, there was something going on here where I wanted to make this more rounded. And I think what we can do here is just um, use the clone stamping tool again on this part here. And probably has to be pretty hard. And just clone stamp this green part, like make like a hundred percent hardness maybe. Nope. Uh, Sixty. Just round it out there. Just kind of like give it a couple. Give it a little bit of magic sauce there. It's not so bad. So would I print this? No, but I think for Facebook, it's going to be good enough. Is there anything I can do about this buckle? I mean, maybe if we want to get really ambitious, we can come in and make this part. Let's see what the horse's face looks like there for real, for one thing. Oh no, there is a thing there. Yeah, there's a thing, there's a thing there. So where is that? Oh, that's there. That's this one, okay. So yeah, it actually just does look like it comes out like that. Did we get that in our selection before? We did. So where is that part in here? Let's find it. Oh, it's kind of there. It kind of is there. There's just a lot of weird stuff next to it. Let's get ambitious. Let's take a quick look what this looks like. So there's a kind of like a hockey puck looking thing there. So let's go and make another new layer. I'm going to call this like top stamp. And what it's going to do is it's going to be able to pull information from everywhere. And we can try and make a horse's chin. That'll be fun. Just a fun little chin. So let's get rid of this slowly and add some information from here. And I think I can probably just erase this part. section that looks almost right so I mean this isn't this isn't great let's just try and even out I mean well, let's take a look actually and see because so there's supposed to be like so we're, we're trying to match this part of the horse's face with this part so I think it's supposed to be like pretty uh, pretty straight there so let's just try and make it a little straighter. Like that. And then pull that in a little bit. It's all about it's all about the details. So uh, let's remind ourselves where we started. So before, after, before and after. Is anything really, really strange in this picture right now? I think we're going to need to do a little bit of like Got like, a, like a half stamp kind of a thing where we take the stamp tool and we say, I want the flow to be 50%. I'm going to take some texture from here and paste it like, ha like half as much. Why is that not doing anything? Oh, because I'm putting over the healing. Like that. <clears throat> so we're taking like half of the texture and color from this area and just sort of blending it in there. And what that does is it makes it a little bit less like, oh, it's just green over and over again. And it makes it a little bit more natural. Let's see if we can grab some stuff from the trees over there. And we're just going to try and just like half stamp in a little bit of texture from elsewhere. How does it look? How does it look if I take? No, the horse isn't going to work for me. Oh, hey, Thomas. So I'm doing this for Thomas, and Thomas might be the only person watching, but that's fine. And let's just come in like, uh, we got some sky there. So be careful with your selection, because you might sometimes get stuff that you don't expect. Uh, let's 
add a little bit more of this plant kind of throughout there and then anywhere where you've got sort of harder edges just try and cut them out so I'm probably gonna send this back to Thomas like this roughly but what you could do is if you wanted to avoid some of this jank because this this stuff here does look look pretty illegitimate even after we do some of our magic sauce it look, it's still looking a little bit uh, illegitimate but ooh, let's do a couple little more horse hairs while we're here because I forgot to do it there so let's just do like that a little more horsey hairs sell it so I'd probably what I would do now is using the original is the original ratio going to do me any, any favors no how do I do just one thing stop it what are you doing so that's like the original probably just want ratio and then oh my god this always happens to me I forget how to free do it for Instagram oh wait that's the other way Five four. So five four is the Instagram ratio. So we're gonna do Instagram. Maybe we can do like like that. And then that cuts off and at least it cuts off like half of your jank. Like that. And then you don't have this little plant and stuff here. because uh, that plant is kind of distracting anyway. But we won't do any cropping right now because this is just for somebody else, so uh, now remember, this clipping mask is supposed to be for this horse face, I think. But I kind of like it for everything up here. Yeah, it works. For, it works better. I think what this is doing is it's it's clipping on. All, it, yeah, because so it's all clipping on the same thing. So let's just group this. And what we can do now is we can play with the opacity of this effect, and I think we still want it just to be one hundred. And pass through, darken? No, pass through. Dissolve, maybe? No, pass through. We want to pass through the effect. And I think what we want to do too is just to, I wonder if we can blur this line up a little bit just because it's a little harsh. So you just come in and just blur it up. Uh, because the I artificially created all of this hair, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit much, and I think I need to do it actually on the, on the actual layer. I think it was just all stamped. Is the stamping stuff? Yeah. So is that making it? Oh, it's just dodge. Herp. I want to blur. Blur it all up a little bit just to make the transition a little bit less terrible. And then I think you can come into healing, do a little bit of healing and set it to like, how do I set? I guess you could set it just to be really soft. And then just sort of like touch, touch a couple spots. And then maybe that, is that all just worse? That's just worse. What we can try to do is just make it at least even or a straight line. Yeah. Like that. And the last thing we want to do is do too much, right? So let's just kind of quit while we're, ahead, while we're ahead, I think. What do I do to mess up that line? Something's gone too far with this curves, I think, too. I feel like I might have an easier time, so let's just save it. Who's messaging me? Ah. Let's save it as it is, I think. So this this is this is horse. 
maximize compatibility is fine. And then let's save as, because we're going to try and, oh, we have to wait for it to finish saving first. Save as uh, horse two. What we can do now is we can merge all these layers together and start fresh. And what that'll let me do is we can come in and do a little bit more stuff to this whole section and help kind of blend it all in together more or less the same way. We'll just do like kind of like a second pass of editing. And because like there's something really fake about how this and the and the tips of this hair turned out. So what I'm gonna do is just it's gonna kinda have split ends, but that's fine. We just wanna grab uh, we wanna grab some real looking hair from over here. Or maybe even from over here. Like right there. Why isn't that working for me? It needs to be really light. Like there. Like that. And this is getting a little bit obsessive, but that's what that's what photo editing is all about. So now that looks yeah, that looks better. So I think what else I want to do is see how the brown hair goes over the black hair everywhere here. And then when we did the artificial stuff, it kind of stopped doing that. I think what I need to do is grab some of this area where it's overlapping and just kind of feather it down like that. I think that'll be more natural. And we can see that effect starting to work right there. Someone's going to send me a bunch of screenshots of my head all sideways, but that's fine. <laughs> I want the real brown though. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's a more natural version of it and there's one long strand right here that I want to use. You can see how it's selecting, there's a little cross where it's selecting, so that's how I know where I'm at. And now you've got that same looking thing and look at that that's way better so I think yeah there's there's like the bowl cut <laughs> there's the bowl cut version and there's like the natural looking version now what else can I do to make this better so right now this is looking pretty hard and I wonder if I can go in and add some sharpness and contrast to just that area so that it it's more of like a hard edge than this like blurred because that looks fake so let's try and do something about that what am i going to do about that i need to increase the clarity of just that zone what's the best way to do that well what we're going to do right now is merge all these layers because they're all good we'll convert it to a smart object and go into filter camera raw filter and we're gonna zoom in here just to see if it works. And we're gonna play around with some of these settings and see if we can make the clarity higher. So the clarity up and the contrast up maybe. I'm looking at just the edge. So I want shadows down. Yeah, so let's do like that. But that comes with the filter. So I can invert that filter and I can use a brush on the white setting, very small. And this is probably not how you're supposed to do any of this, but that's fine. And just paint in that filter on the very edge of the horse. And that should give it more of a defined edge. And you know what? I probably want a really soft brush and a little bigger because I can already tell this looks kind of whack. So we're going to tend towards, ooh, you know what we can do? Let's go and put the flow at like 45, so it's less than that initial one. It's like eyeliner. You just put it on, and you put on another layer over top right next to it. And what that would do is, when you zoom all the way out, of course, is it makes it just a little bit more defined. And that's looking good. 
Now, what I want to do with that, I think, is flatten that in uh, discard hidden layers. No, I want to rasterize it. Rasterize it, which leaves it cool, but then it's still kind of bumpy. So I'm going to go to filter and liquify. And what that's going to do is open up the liquify dialog box. And it's going to give me a hard time, even though I've got a pretty nice video card. You come in here. And what you can do in liquify is you can see all the areas that are sort of pushed in. And we can just nudge those out just a little bit. Just because I see some places where it's not quite not quite right in my eyes. I want to just nudge it out just a little bit here and there just to make it more realistic. And that's what we want to do. Just make it look kind of like straight. Especially with this line coming down here, I want that all to be better. So that is where we're at with that face. Now, so that this is the before and after, and it's a small change, but I think it's worth what? Oh, I pressed cancel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. No problem. And we'll open it up and push. Push, push, push. We'll try, and this is always the hardest part when you mess up. We're going to try to do just as good a job the second time around as we did the first time around. Just with a lot of care and attention. Try to figure out where it needs to come out and where it needs to go in to look realistic. That's looking a lot better. So let's click OK this time. You'll see it adjust a little bit, so it's not a big deal. Uh, let's go and check this other image just to see if there are any. Okay, so there's a f there's like a fuck ton of hairs that come off of this thing. What are we gonna do about that? He's got like chin hairs, which we didn't get as part of our selection at all. Hmm, those are pretty small to just grab. Pretty small to just grab, but we're going to try and do it anyway, because we're trying to make this the best it can possibly be. Little chin hairs, okay. So we need to move them over here and they need to be way bigger. And what I'm gonna do here I think is go here and then we had a curves thing before but we got rid of it so let's put those there and do curves again, do a clipping mask there and we could have been done but we wouldn't have been done right like that ish and we want we want them kind of behind right we want them kind of behind so We'll put them behind. Confirm that. And actually, just barely over top like that. And then we'll try and paint it out, I guess. So I'm just going to make it kind of obvious where the thing is and then give this a mask and set my brush to black and paint out the hairs. 
right along. And I want this this photo to be a hundred. Right along where the horse is. I probably want oh I don't want a feather bed at all. So I want this to be like that. And if I set this to darken, does that do what I want it to do? It almost does what I want it to do. <laughs> Not quite though. Multiply? No. Overlay? Not quite. Just normal. I think we're gonna have to be happy not having those hairs in the picture. It doesn't really add that much to the effect anyway. There's definitely hairs there's definitely hairs there, but I don't know if we can really add it in any meaningful way. It's kinda of tricky. Is there anywhere else where there's hair that we could steal from in the actual image because I don't I'm just not feeling that talented nope I think we're just gonna have to go with the face the way that it is and it looks a little artificial because it is a little artificial <laughs> it's a lot artificial um, but what I'll do is let's go ahead and open horse one steal this background copy put it into horse two and look at the before and after. So there's the before and what we did was we removed the lady with a lot of clone stamping healing and then we took the horse um, face from this other picture and inserted it. Did a whole bunch of stuff and then boom it, uh, it looks like that. And then Thomas can go in and he can fix how uh, how fake this part looks later. That's exactly what he'll do. Ooh, you know what we could do, actually? Fuck it, we're here anyway. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, there is a section of grass here that's real. So, what I'll do is, with the original layer underneath, just to make it look a little bit more realistic, is bring back the areas in the background that I had previously colored over, that are you know currently fake just bring back the original details so they're legit because there were some spots here ooh she's got hair no let's not do that like that so I can see that there's some of her hair here so we'll just get rid of that but other than that, and then there, there, now it looks a little bit more realistic, except for there's some ghosting happening here. Let's just get rid of that. With a really, really soft brush. Yeah, really soft brush. Shake it all away. I think that's it for the ghosting, but we got some of the original details of the grass back, and now that looks even more realistic than before. Okay, I'm gonna call it good there for the horse picture. And if you watch this whole thing, wow, sorry for wasting so much time by being bad at Photoshop. And uh, if you need anything done as far as pictures or editing or video or anything like that, just give me a shout at the Facebook page or at uh, Media at gmail.com. Bye.